Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Ian, I'm Ian the Reader, and today I am back with another reading vlog. I am super excited about this. It has been a long time since I've done a reading vlog. I think I've only done one this year, so super excited to be doing one of these again. This is the continuation of the series, I Try Three, in which I do a reading vlog of me trying three of some type of book or some type of genre. The first edition of this was back in like October, November. I did I Try Three Buzzy Mystery Thriller Authors. And now we have the continuation with episode two, I Try Three Buzzy Science Fiction Authors. I've been wanting to read more science fiction authors and so this was a great excuse to be trying more of the genre. I love fantasy but I really don't read enough science fiction so this was a really great experiment for me to try and find a new favorite author and I had a lot of thoughts on these books. This is of course after the fact. I've already finished all three books and you're about to watch me reading them and going through my thoughts so enjoy. Now let's talk about the books that I am going to be reading in this vlog. I'm going to briefly tell you a little bit of what each of these books is about. As I'm reading through it though you will get my non-spoiler thoughts and feelings. I'm not going to go into the plot as it progresses throughout the story. I'm just going to give you generic feelings and like how I'm enjoying it, how I'm not enjoying it, things like that. That way you can still enjoy this video if you have not read the books or you can enjoy it even more if you have because you'll know exactly what I'm going through. I will go ahead and put chapters in this video in case you just want to hear my thoughts on specific books but I have a lot of thoughts on each of these so I do hope that you stick around for the whole video. So the first book that I am featuring in this vlog is Old Man's War by John Scalzi. This author is one that I've been wanting to try for years. Like before I even really got into fantasy and sci-fi, I had heard of John Scalzi because of his book Locked In, which I'll go ahead and put a picture of right here. That was hopping around on Goodreads for quite a while. And then I heard about Old Man's War. He also has a lot of other books that I've heard great things about like Red Shirts, um, I think there's a new one that just came out. I can't remember the name of, but I'll put that here. Really, this author just has a lot of different types of science fiction books, and I've been wanting to try them for a long time. So this is a perfect excuse to make myself finally read Old Man's War. Let me tell you a little bit of what this book is about, though. This follows John Perry, who on his 75th birthday goes to visit his wife's grave and then joins the army. And it goes from there. This old man joins the war and goes up into space to fight an intergalactic battle, which is totally normal in the society. You can register to do that when you're 65 and kind of find out more about it. And then when you turn 75, you are shipped off. And so a lot of people do choose to do that in this society. And it goes throughout his uh, first year or so, I think, in this environment. So that's what this book is about. I have a lot of thoughts on it, so stay tuned for those. The second author that I chose to feature in this reading vlog is Michael Crichton with his book, Sphere. This was a book that I had heard quite a few things about, but it was obviously not the main choice that I would have gone with for Michael Crichton necessarily, because his most buzzy book is, of course, Jurassic Park. I think you've probably heard of that one, right? Um, but I, I thought about reading Jurassic Park, but at the same time, I wanted something that was a little bit less familiar to me. I know that the novel version, the original version of Jurassic Park is vastly different from the film, but still I wanted something a little bit new and fresh. There is a movie adaptation of Sphere, but I still have yet to see it. Let me tell you a little bit of what this book is about though. We follow our main character who is selected to join a task force sent to make first contact with an alien spaceship that has been discovered on planet Earth. I'm not gonna tell you any more about this book because I think it is good to go in blind but continue on to the reading vlog to watch my non-spoiler thoughts. And the third and final book that I did choose to feature in this reading vlog is Hyperion by Dan Simmons. This is a book that I had to read anyway because it was one of my five star predictions for quarter two. Uh, I have a lot of thoughts on this. If you've already seen my quarter two predictions wrap up video then you may know some of my thoughts but the basic gist of this book is that seven individuals are chosen to go on a final pilgrimage to the planet Hyperion. Each of them is chosen because they have some sort of back story and history with the planet Hyperion. And as we go throughout the story, each of them tells their tale as they journey to the planet. This has a lot of stuff going on for it because each story kind of delves into a separate genre to kind of pay tribute to that genre. You've got romance, you've got uh, like mystery thrillers, you've got a lot of different stuff going on. So this book is more than one story in one. It is like seven short stories that are interconnected with little segments in between to connect those stories even more so. This was my first exposure to Dan Simmons and continue on to the reading vlog to watch my thoughts. Okay, so those are the three books that I try in this video. Now we're gonna go ahead and go on to the live footage of me reading these books. Uh, just know I was very sick through most of this vlog. Like throughout the month of May, I was sick like three times. So I was sick and then I was not sick and then I was sick again. So prepare for that. I don't sound great, but thank you so much for watching and enjoy. Hey guys, it is Monday, the 23rd of May. 
it's rainy i'm not feeling well but i still have to work so i'm going to go get breakfast for me and my family i think chicken biscuit sounds pretty freaking good but i'm starting my first science fiction book today it's going to be old man's war by john scalzi i'm very excited i've heard really good things about this one um I take that back. I've heard good things. I haven't heard anybody ever tell me like it's their favorite book ever, but I just have this really good feeling that I'm going to enjoy it, that I'm going to enjoy John Scalzi's writing. So I'm very hopeful. I have the audiobook. I also have the physical book, so I've got both options. Very excited. I'll keep you updated on what I think though. Okay, so it's a little bit later. I am working. Clearly I have my wonderful little headset on. Um, and I'm about three hours into Old Man's War and I'm having a great time. I knew I was going to have a great time. I just heard that this book was a lot of fun, but I did not anticipate the sarcasm, the banter, uh, just, it's a fun time. It really is. Like, I really enjoy the characters. It's so funny because they interact like, they even mentioned at some point, like they interact like high school students almost, you know, like these young people, but they're all really old. Um, I just got to a point in the novel where things have very much changed for them physically. I'm not going to go into it too much, but uh, it is uh, it's taking a turn I didn't anticipate. I don't know what I anticipated, but I'm entertained. So it's good so far. I have still like six hours left or something like that. I think it's like almost 10 hours. Not quite. Uh, but yeah, I'm having a great time. Yeah. And I'm like super freaking tired though. So I have a sugar-free Red Bull here with me and it's the only thing getting me through. COVID is not fun. I'm feeling mostly better. I say mostly, not mostly, like probably like 50 to 60% better compared to like the last few days. But I just wanna go to sleep. I do. So thank God for Red Bull and entertaining audiobooks. Also shout out to Sci-Fi Audiobook on YouTube for having the whole dang audiobook on there. That's pretty cool. I'm trying really hard to work, but this book keeps making me laugh. Like <laughs> there's like a drill sergeant that's just been introduced. And he just keeps going off, man, and it's killing me. So uh, I might have to stop listening so that I can work, but I'm having a good time. Hey guys, okay, so it is now evening and I am about halfway through Old Man's War, which is pretty great for my first day of doing this video thing. Um, so I'm enjoying it a lot so far. At the, like, kind of a little bit before the halfway mark, we definitely had a shift as we entered into part two. It was less of, like, the camaraderie between all of the older people recruits and them just being together and things like that and now they've really entered into like the warfare aspect of this story and i'm very engaged um i like just the imminent danger that exists at all times in this story as well as like the different aliens and like the different alien species that are being introduced i think they're really fascinating and uh yeah i'm eager to see more of them because i get the feeling that there's like quite a few different types it's not just like the humans versus like this one specific type of alien. It's more like there are a bunch of different types. So very excited about that. I also really like the main character. I think he's very competent. He's very humble, but he's also super sarcastic and really fun. Uh, I think he's a great main character. So I'm very interested to see how he rises in the ranks in this series. I don't know if he will though. Part of me wonders if he's going to actually like die in the first book and the future books, because I think there are six books in this series. I'm wondering if in actuality, rather than it being like he's the main character for all of them, he's just gonna make it through like the first book because apparently the mortality rate in this series is quite high. Not like people have told me that, just like the characters are saying, like most of you will die within like two years. And I don't know, I'm curious to see how much time passes in this first book and what happens with our main character. And yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying myself so far. It's definitely becoming more hard sci-fi the further we get into it. At first, like it's set like in America and things like that. Are taking place like he goes to offices he talks about like cooking in his kitchen things like that so it has definitely shifted now into more of a hard sci-fi type of setting um but it still feels very rooted in like the culture of this earth and things like that like he's discovering a lot it's not like he's super familiar with all of the space stuff it's like he lived his life on earth and now that he has entered into the military, he's now finding out about all the space stuff. So I'm enjoying it a lot though. Very interested to see where it goes from here. And I will check in probably tomorrow because I think tonight I'm gonna to listen to something else. I think that Old Man's War will be like my at work audiobook because it's really easy to listen to. And I'll listen to something else tonight. And yeah, I'll check in with you guys later. All right, it's the next day and I have just finished Old Man's War by John Scalzi. And I liked it. I didn't love it, <clears throat> but I liked it. Uh, so my thoughts on the book are not really complicated as much as they are just not, not complicated, if that makes sense. Like this book was very straightforward in a lot of ways. Um, 
I really enjoyed the humor of the book, really in the first half, because, I mean, the tone of the first half versus the second half, they're just drastically different. They really are. Um, and that's fine. Like, I enjoyed that in some ways because you got, you know, different things from this book, which, you know, is always kind of fun. Um, but, yeah, the, the first half of this book actually made me laugh out loud while I was listening to it, which, like, never happens. At some points, I may, like, smile in books, maybe chuckle, uh, but laughing out loud is a very, very rare occurrence for me when I'm listening to books. And so I did really enjoy that. Um, as far as the second half goes, I liked the bits of the universe and like the different creatures and things that I did get, but I just wanted a little bit more. Um, and maybe that is unrealistic of me because I was expecting something out of this book that it wasn't. Because this is very much like a small story. Um, you know, it's not necessarily like the start to this epic series. Like in some ways it is because the series does continue on for six books. But I don't think that the next books are going to follow the same character or characters. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so. Um, and in addition to that, I guess this it didn't feel like this is like leading into the next books necessarily. This feels very self-contained. It feels like a very small story about this man and his kind of exposure into this world. Um, and, you know, in some ways, there, there's something that happens. I don't want to spoil because, you know, if you're watching this and haven't read the book, you may want to because it's a fun book. Um, but something happens. He comes across someone about two thirds of the way into the book. And they really just kind of change his perspective on the morality of what is going on in this whole program um, because it becomes very personal for him. And I really enjoy that aspect. I wish it had been explored a little bit more, um, but I still enjoyed it and I still thought that it was, you know, delved into relatively deeply. Um, ultimately, I think this book was good and I had a good time with it. And I do plan on continuing with the series and I hope that it gets a little bit bigger and I'm sure that it will. I'm sure it'll get, you know, a little bit more epic. Uh, because this really is just like a first taste. And for like a science fiction book, one that is as ambitious as far as like the technology and the worlds that are being explored, this is very short. Um, it was less than 10 hours long. And so I'm eager to see how John Scalzi chooses to continue building upon what he has started in book one. Um, and I'm curious to see if he, you know, makes it into this bigger conversation and a bigger story or if he just kind of continues on in this more like small scale type of, um, you know, collection of books. So I'm curious to see what goes on next in the series. As far as my individual rating, I'm leaning, I'm somewhere between three and a half stars and four stars. I really did enjoy myself. I laughed. Uh, it was emotional at times. It was action packed. I enjoyed, you know, the different alien species that we were exposed to and it felt unique in some ways. Uh, other things about it felt kind of generic, but I really enjoyed our protagonist and his experiences throughout his time in this book. Um, yeah, three and a half to four stars. I'll probably settle on something by the end of this reading vlog, but that's all for book one. I haven't decided which book I want to start on next. Probably not Hyperion. Maybe I'm wrong, but yeah. I enjoyed Old Man's War though, and this vlog is going very well so far. Sorry it's not like super interesting other than me just like telling you my thoughts on books. I feel like that's better, you know, I could just give you random uh, clips of me doing stuff, but given the fact that I'm sick, I haven't really been doing stuff. So this is it, I'm still sitting in my office working and listening to audiobooks. So anyway, those are my thoughts on this one. I'll check back in once I have picked my second book. Hey guys, it is now Friday the 27th, three day weekend, thank God. Um, and I took a little bit of a break from this challenge and I listened to a couple of other audiobooks, but I am back in with the sci-fi. I am now listening to Sphere by Michael Crichton and I'm very excited about it. I hope that that's the right way to say it, Crichton. I think it is. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited about this one. I've been wanting to read his works for a long time. I just didn't really know where to start. Um, but I've heard that Sphere is good. Very excited about it. Don't know what to expect. It's very easy to get into, I will say. I'm only like 30 minutes in, but I'm already like super hooked. So I'm very excited about that. And uh, I'm eager to see where it goes from here. So I'll check back in once I've made some actual progress. But 
I don't know how much that'll be because Obi-Wan Kenobi just dropped on Disney Plus and I'm super hyped about that. I'm also just really tired and I want to sleep. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm out getting some drive through for dinner because I had to work this afternoon and evening in the end and uh, we just didn't have time for dinner. So Sonic it is. But I just wanted to do a quick update on Sphere. I'm about an hour in now and I knew very little about this book going into it, to be honest. Like very, very little. Um, really, it had just, you know, come recommended as... A, a good Michael Crichton book and so I was like sure this seems like a good enough place to start and I jumped in knowing that it involved like uh aliens and like first encounters and all that jazz uh but I really am enjoying this approach where the protagonist is very much like a skeptic in some ways because he he talks about how he had like originally been on this project as a psychologist uh, to kind of do these experiments and analyze and come up with a plan for what what humanity should do or what the government should do in the instance of contact with aliens. And so he did that, but he really just did it for the money. He didn't really believe in it at all. He was offered this project and he's like, this is hilarious. I guess I'll do this just because I need the money and the money was good. And now he's in this situation where they've called him in to be a part of this first contact group. And now that they've found this alien spaceship, and they're using the plan that he came up with during that original time when he was, you know, paid to do that. And he's just like, I didn't, like, he didn't mean any of that, you know? And so that's just really entertaining to me because he's like, oh, y'all thought I was serious. And that just cracks me up. So um, I'm really enjoying that. Uh, I'm really enjoying the book so far as well. It's just very easily... I don't know, it's just written in such a way that it's very easy to get into it, you know? It feels very approachable. And I enjoyed Old Man's War, and I did that to an extent, but this is doing it in a very interesting way, just because I think with Old Man's War, it felt a little bit too close to home and very much like, I don't know, it, you, you didn't get submerged in like, oh my gosh, something big is happening as quickly. It just felt a little bit more like run of the mill. Uh, but with this, it's very much like, oh my gosh, this is huge. Um, and I've never really read like a first contact type of book before. I've seen many movies um, of that variety, but I've never read a book that is like that. And so this is just fascinating for me. I'm very much enjoying it. And uh, I'm very excited to see really like what the aliens are like and what their technology is like, because it's so exciting to be at a, like I feel like I'm in, in the narrator's shoes or the protagonist's shoes because I have literally no idea what it's gonna be like in there. I don't know what the aliens are gonna look like, what their technology is gonna be like. And it's very exciting because it feels like right now I'm like on the edge of something and anything could happen. And I just love that. They just came and delivered my food and I looked like an idiot just sitting here talking to my phone. Maybe they thought I was FaceTiming or something. Maybe they didn't think I was an idiot, but I felt like an idiot. But anyway, that is my update for now. I will check back in when I've made some more significant progress. I just wanted to give some quick updates while I had time and uh, I'm just having a lot of thoughts and feelings about it so far. So that's great. Well, I just finished filming a book haul. It was a big one. I'm ashamed, but here is a picture of the stacks on stacks on stacks of books that I just hauled. So there you have that. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, I've been meaning to film a book haul for a while. So that's that's like February until now. So that's quite a few months of book buying, but still, that's a lot. Moving on to something else, though. I am really enjoying Sphere by Michael Crichton. It is going in a lot of directions I didn't anticipate. I don't want to spoil anything, so I won't say much in regard to the plot. But I will say there are plot twists that I am very much enjoying. And this book is kind of morphing into something else. It started as a solely like science fiction story but it's morphed now into like i can't remember the name it's like a a locked room thriller or something like that where they're kind of trapped in this situation and uh it's it, you know tension is high tension is high i'll leave it at that but i'm very much enjoying it it's going in a lot of directions i didn't anticipate and i'm very eager to see how it finishes off i'm about 40 percent of the way through so i still have quite a bit to go but i'm very excited okay guys it is now monday and I'm not feeling great, but I did finish Sphere by Michael Crichton, and I have a lot of thoughts on it. I really enjoyed this book a lot. It went in a lot of directions that I did not see coming at the beginning of the book, and it was a lot more than it seemed. Um, and that's something I always appreciate, you know, when a story is not as straightforward as the premise makes you believe at the start. Um, and that was definitely the case with this book. I was left wondering a little bit uh, as to the state of things at the end of the story, 
but I will say that the last line of this book is one that actually gave me chills. Like when the, the last sentence was read, I was just like, what? And uh, that's something I really enjoyed. So um, I really enjoyed the sci-fi themes of this and also like the philosophical kind of questions that were raised in this story as well. Um, honestly, it was just a really good time. It was one that felt very mysterious. It felt almost like a thriller. Um, and it was just, it was a good time. It really was. So I greatly enjoyed Sphere. Um, it wasn't perfect. I think there were a few pacing issues, um, at times, nothing crazy. I, I was engaged for the most part. Um, but once we kind of get to a point a little over halfway where we kind of have a better understanding of what's going on, things kind of slowed down a little bit, um, and then picked up again. But, uh, it was, it was just a really good time. I had a good time with it. I really don't have any complaints. Um, it didn't, do anything that was particularly unique to the genre, I guess, um, if I had to say. I mean, I haven't read a ton of sci-fi, but nothing like full on like unexpected, I guess. It just was a bit different than I initially thought it was going to be. Um, I did have a good time with it though, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this four stars. And uh, yeah, Michael Crichton was great. I honestly cannot wait to pick up another one of his books. Obviously, Jurassic Park is one I wanna pick up, but I've also heard really good things about Micro. I think that's what it's called, and Prey. Um, but I could use some more recommendations if any of you have read a lot of Michael Crichton of where you think I should go next. I'm super excited about it. Alrighty guys, it's been a while. It's been like over a week, uh, but I am reading Hyperion and I wanted to just do a quick update on that. Uh, so how this book is formatted is very interesting. So the premise of it is that seven individuals who have experience with the planet Hyperion are being called back for a final pilgrimage of the planet Hyperion. And throughout this book, we find out, the, the book is essentially the tales of all of these seven people and how they ended up having experience with Hyperion and how they ended up being selected for, or how they got to the point of being where they are at this point in the story where they're going on this pilgrimage. And so each of them tells their story and that's just the whole book. And then the series continues on from here, I've heard. Um, but that it almost feels like, connected short stories and they're not really connected in any plot sense other than that all these people have been brought together but they're connected by this planet and by this society um and so it's it's taken me a little bit to get used to that and this is very dense heavy sci-fi um and there's a lot going on and each story brings a different focus to this planet and to this culture and to the society and so you really do have to pay attention and that's what's throwing me off just because there's so much and I, every time i miss something i feel like i have to go back um, but I'm having a blast with this. I am. So like I said, it's divided up into short stories from each character's perspective. The first one was the priest's tale. And that one took me a little bit to get used to just because it was the first one. But that is my favorite of the three that I've read so far. It is dark. It is twisted. It has themes of religion um, and obsession and isolation and also just, you know, colonialization a little bit as well. Um, and whew, it was heavy. It was real heavy. I enjoyed it, but at the end, my gut was like, Ugh, you know, so uh, that was a really good one. The second story was The Soldier's Tale, and that one I, I, I enjoyed, actually. I enjoyed it. It was a little bit uncomfortable. There was a lot of sex in it um, and a lot of war, um, and it lost me at times, especially at the beginning of it, and then it got kind of weird at the end, but the middle was very engaging, so I did enjoy The Soldier's Tale pretty well, and then the third tale is The Scholar's Tale, no, not The Scholar's Tale, The Poet's Tale, and that was my least favorite. It was all over the place, it was kind of confusing, and came together at the end, and it was redeemed a little bit, in my opinion, but... It is definitely my least favorite of the three that I've read so far. So I still have to jump into the fourth one, probably today. That's The Scholar's Tale. Um, but I am on chapter four officially, which is just about at the halfway point, I think. I'm trying to find my place in the physical book because I have it right here. Yeah, so I'm on page 234. It's like right there. So I am moving on through this book. Um, it is definitely the most dense of the three that I've read so far, um, or of the other two books in this video that I've featured. I'm enjoying it. I'm not sure if it's going to be a five. It could be because this is, this book is saying a lot more than the other two did. Um, and I appreciate that. And it's definitely a very vast world that we're digging into here. Um, 
it's just a lot. And so we'll see how my thoughts settle. We'll see what I think of these next few um, stories. I'm buddy reading this with Kyle from Read by Kyle, and he just read The Scholar's Tale, and he said it was one of the most, like, I think he said the most emotionally visceral things he's ever read. And so that scares me because I don't want to be emotional. So um, I'm going to read this pretty soon, and I will update you with my thoughts either midway through or when I'm done with The Scholar's Tale. Hey guys, I forgot to do an update after The Scholar's Tale, which is probably fine because my thoughts would have been a little bit incohesive and emotional. Um, but I've now finished The Scholar's Tale and The Detective's Tale, so I only have one left, The Consul's Tale. Okay, let's start with The Scholar's Tale. That was very upsetting. Uh, as upsetting, if not more so, than I was expected, expecting it to be. I think it was a different kind of upsetting than I thought it would be. Um, I don't want to spoil it, but something happens around the 30% mark, or maybe like the halfway point of the story, and it's quite long. Um, and once that happens, you're sad, but it's like the slowest heartbreak ever because I don't think you really realize the full impact of what has happened until the story continues to progress and it just gets worse and worse and worse in like the most soft way, but the most heartbreaking way, um, if that makes sense. So it was really hard. Um, <laughs> I, Kyle, I was messaging him or I was talking to him about it on Discord and he made fun of me for not crying, especially because I'm a dad and there's some aspects of it that a parent in particular would be impacted by. But I did get a lump in my throat and my eyes were a little bit teary. Um, and I was very sad the rest of the day. Uh, not, not the rest of the day, but, you know, there was a melancholy tone to part of my day. <laughs> I hope that's enough. You know, for me, that's, that's a lot. I don't really get emotional reading books physically or audiobooks. Occasionally I do, but it more has to do with my frame of mind at the time than I think the book or like a, a perfect storm of both. Um, and I was in a good mood when I was listening to this and it bummed me out. It gave me a lump but I was okay, I didn't weep. So uh, it's very sad though. It was also just incredibly thought provoking and moving. Um, there's also a lot of like commentary in on the intrusion of media into people's personal lives in the midst of tragedy and whether that is a bad thing or a good thing or if it's both. Um, it was really good though. I, I really, really enjoyed it. It was beautiful. It was so sad. Um, it was great. The Scholar's Tale was top notch, five out of five, my favorite story so far. Um, now let's go ahead and transition into The Detective's Tale. So The Detective's Tale was very different. Um, and in some ways, I think that my opinion and other people's opinions are impacted by the fact that this one comes right after The Scholar's Tale, which I think is pretty much universally people's favorite. Maybe not 100% universally, but I mean, a lot of people love it. Um, but if The Detective's Tale had maybe been before The Scholar's Tale, I think people would like it more. But going from this hugely emotionally impactful story to this like detective noir style story is very jarring um, a little bit and the emotional resonance of it just isn't as profound. There is some emotional aspect to it. There's a love story involved, um, but not nearly as impactful as The Scholar's Tale. And so I think that that impacts people's thoughts on a little bit. I myself really did enjoy this one though. I thought that the noir and detective thing was nailed pretty well, but it has this really fun like sci-fi angle to it. I've read like quite a few like fantasy detective stories, I guess. Uh, but the sci-fi one was very uh, interesting and it felt really fresh. And I really enjoyed the commentary on like the state of this world in regard to the conflict between humans and artificial intelligence, or artificial intelligence and all that. I thought it was really well handled. And so, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I wish it had gone a little bit farther. I wish it had been like a little bit more thrilling with all the detective stuff. Um, but ultimately I did enjoy this one quite a bit. And so I am excited. I am nervous going into this last console tale. I've just barely started. I'll probably finish it tonight. Um, I'll probably comment on it tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm excited and I'm nervous. The tensions are high amongst this group, which they've always been kind of high, but as they're nearing the end of their pilgrimage, it's gotten much higher. Um, so we'll see what happens. And there's this supposed spy amongst them and uh, I have my theories as to who it might be, but we'll go ahead and see. Uh, yeah, so I will update once I'm done. Well, I'm done. It is now Saturday morning, 
And I'm done with all of them. I'm done with Old Man's War by John Scalzi, with Sphere by Michael Crichton, and Hyperion by Dan Simmons. Uh, let's talk Hyperion real quick though. So I finished The Consul's Tale and I really enjoyed it. Um, I had seen reviews where people said that The Consul's Tale was one of their least favorites and I just don't get that to be honest. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was melancholy. It was thought-provoking. It was moving. Um, I really enjoyed it a lot. It was not my favorite but it was definitely like on the upper end. Uh, so yeah and it was an interesting twist I guess on what I expected in the grand reveal after the console's tale the reveal of who the spy was it was an interesting twist the way that was handled uh, so I really enjoyed that and then the ending just felt so powerful and like gripping and inconclusive unfortunately but you know good still the thing that I hate is when a book is like super big and so the publisher decides to split it into two volumes even though it was originally written as one book. This doesn't happen often but it does come up a lot in fantasy and sci-fi I feel like because those tend to run on the longer side and I just I really dislike it when a work that was originally intended to be one volume is split in a way that does not feel natural and while Hyperion you know sort of had a conclusion it very much is the whole time you're kind of building up to this point and right before you get there the book ends and so I guess this is kind of its own story because the whole purpose of book one in this case was to tell the story of these seven seven people going on this pilgrimage and it did do that but you don't actually experience what happens when they get where they're going you know the climax of the story is yet to be unveiled and so I, I Hyperion itself is good and enjoyable but it doesn't stand alone in a lot of ways I don't see how somebody could read Hyperion without then f feeling compelled to read the sequel I think it's called The Fall of Hyperion um so I will definitely be reading that at some point that being said for this vlog I'm just talking about Dan Simmons's first book in the series Hyperion um so I will elaborate on my thoughts a little bit more later when I'm recapping all three of the works, but I do just want to quickly rank the different stories. So we only get six of the seven uh, people's stories in this. So my least favorite is going to be The Poet, which is a, a hot take, I guess, a little bit because I, a lot of people like The Poets. I did not really, just did not grip me, did not hold my attention as much as the rest of them. I felt like it was really all over the place and kind of rambling and just... Nah, it was okay. And I really didn't like the poet as a character either, so that didn't help. Um, <clears throat> after that, I'm going to say The Soldier. I really did enjoy that story, uh, mostly. There were moments of fantastic writing and action and suspense in that story. And there were moving parts as well, but it just got lost a little bit in the strangeness of it. Um, and I will leave that there. But it was it was good. It was not my favorite, though. That's definitely on the lower end. Uh, it's my second to least favorite. After that, I would say the detective story. I really like that one, but I felt like the detective aspects and the noir aspects could have been a little bit more profound in this section. It was there, but it could have been elaborated on quite a bit, in my opinion, and it could have just been more gripping. It was good. It was atmospheric, and I liked the discussion that was going on in that story, but it could have been a little bit better so it's it was still really good don't get me wrong but it's definitely in the middle after that i'm gonna go the consul's tale sort of the consul's tale and the priest's tale are like neck and neck but i think the consul's tale lacked a certain amount of shock factor that i really enjoyed in the priest's tale uh the priest's tale was just mind-blowing and it was the introduction so i feel like it kind of allowed the reader to be steeped and what Hyperion is all about and what's going to be going on and kind of just it's a crash course in what this book is it's immersive but it's confusing because there's a lot going on so you really have to pay attention and then it's shocking as well so it is in a lot of ways Hyperion in a nutshell I think the priest's tale so that's my second favorite but the scholar's tale has to get the first it was emotionally gripping so moving so powerful so thought-provoking and I just could not stop going through that book or that story it was really really amazing um so yeah overall I enjoyed it unfortunately I don't feel like I can give it five stars despite the fact that some of the stories held within are absolutely five stars even six stars um the, the 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 scale is just unbalanced because of the fact that there are some stories that really didn't do it for me as much and then there are other stories that just blew my mind um so I'm gonna have to think on it and I'll go ahead and announce my rating at the end 
but uh, I'm gonna have to think on it for a day or so. All right, so that is it. That is the end of the reading vlog. Let's go ahead and recap it. So the first book that I read was Old Man's War. Upon reflection, I'm going to go ahead and give this a 3.5. There were a lot of things that I did enjoy about this book. The humor, some of the characters, and a few of the emotional arcs that we go on. That being said, I wish that the world had gone a little bit farther and that the climax had done a little bit more for me, just because personally, I felt like it was a little bit anticlimactic at the end. You have all this buildup and then it just kind of ends. So I would like to continue on with the series. I do plan on doing Doing so, but in the end, I'm giving this a 3.5. Now, as far as fear goes, I enjoyed this book a lot. This book was so much fun. It didn't necessarily do all the things that I wanted it to do, and there were certain aspects of it that I felt were a little bit uh, bait and switchy, I guess. Maybe that's a way of putting it. But in the end, I had a blast with this. There were a lot of great twists. And uh, yeah, I had a blast with this. So I'm going to go ahead and give this four stars. And lastly, Hyperion by Dan Simmons. Collectively, my rating is a 4.2, which I'm rounding up to 4.5 because I really just am amazed by the grandeur, the epic nature of this science fiction work. Dan Simmons truly did so much with it. But thank you so much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments which genre I should tackle next with this type of vlog. I'm thinking either I try three buzzy fantasy authors or I try three underrated horror authors. So let me know which one of those you would prefer. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!